on Maya TV. So my name is Alihia. I'll be your host today. I am with Jeremy Dingle, who is an artist, writer, performer, and vocalist. So Jeremy, how are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're really happy to have you here. We're doing this series where we interview a bunch of artists, get to know their history, get to know their new projects, and what they're about. So I do want to start off um, at the beginning. So mm -hmm. where did you grow up and, and how did you transition into the arts? I was raised in Toronto, Canada, and at a very, very young age, I was, I suppose, lured into the arts. Uh, the arts, in a sense, saved my life, actually, I believe. Uh, I was a kid, and I was drawn into the theater to get away from the unsavory, you know, bullying and the, the terrible things that were happening in other areas. And in the theater, I found I was accepted because I was a very quirky kid. And I made a lot of sound effects and did a lot of characters and was just one of those very outgoing theatrical kind of kids. So when I found the theater, something popped, something clicked. And so at a very, very young age, I got an agent and started you know, driving my bike around Toronto at the time. It was safe enough to do that. And started to get commercials and a couple of films and enough to kind of get me into some sort of a routine with it. Mm -hmm. And then I really wound up focusing on just getting better as a performer studying theater, studying music, studying just the arts, writing, you name it. Mm -hmm. And it took with me well enough, and I committed to it at a pretty young age. And that's my humblish beginnings. Yeah, so a lot of people start off in the theater and they move on to film and, you know, big screen, small screen. Did you like to do both? Were you auditioning for both plays and, like, commercials? Mm -hmm. Or did you want to do, you know, just motion pictures? Started in the theater, as I said, because I was gravitated into the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I was doing that, I just had this, at around 11 years old, I had this urge to get an agent. And so I went to my parents and mm -hmm. I said, can I get an agent? And they said, okay. I was very independent. And so they said, sure. And so uh, I got the, the first agency. This was one of those stories of sort of, uh, this is a meant to be story. Mm -hmm. uh, went to see a bunch of agents. One of them sent me on what they used to call a go see for a Pepsi commercial. And I got it. First thing I ever went out on, wow. got it. Yeah. So that's a pretty big. That was a pretty big thing to land. That was around the time when Michael Jackson hair was going on fire and all that stuff in the eighties. So, uh, so I got that. But my interest was really the theater, mm -hmm. because in the theater I could explore characters. I could be in front of a live group of people, mm -hmm. which for me was always a big charge. And so I really was committed to theater and being in theater as much as I enjoyed doing film and TV work. The theater was really where I, I think I developed a lot of my craft mm -hmm. and a lot of my passion to continue to develop and grow and, and learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it says a lot that you want to do from a young age, so it's something that I think really shows throughout the years, you know, you go, you pick up things, pick up skills. So with that, when you came to the States, were you just auditioning here and then hoping to live here one day? Or did you, you know, did you come to LA first or did you go live to New York? Right. Good questions. Uh, my, when I finished theater school, I, I did a theater school, like a conservatory program. Uh, and so I was in school for a while, uh, and I didn't want to rush the process. I wanted to learn as much as I could in a school environment about the arts and about performance. And, you know, as I say, every aspect that I could learn from, from producing to doing music, to doing comedy, to doing, you know, Shakespearean acting, as much as I could learn. And then take that, and then what I really did was I just kind of went around to most of the big cities that I could think of, New York, Vancouver, Canada, L.A., to see if what I was doing, I'd actually produced a one-man show. It was like a one-man Hamlet, and nobody was doing a one-man Hamlet. I mean, it was just this really bizarre idea I had of, okay, I'll do this show. So I did this show and started taking it on the road. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that after a couple of years of doing that and showcasing just aspects of the show or doing the whole show, mm -hmm. I wound up at the Comedy Store in Hollywood. And I'd never had any aspirations really to just do the Hollywood thing. Mm -hmm. I just wound up at the Comedy Store, which is, as some people know, is basically one of the biggest comedy clubs in the country. Mm -hmm. And the owner at the time, Mitzi, she was what I would consider a guru. She knew, she knew, as soon as she saw someone on her stage, she knew if they had it. And if she endorsed you, uh, that was a really big deal. So that's what, that's what really set me to being here. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it was years of going back and forth and immigration issues. And, mm -hmm. and, and I did, I found a wife, <laughs> fortunately. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so that helped. So, uh, so I, I have become a citizen pretty recently, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was a really, it was a back and forth shuffle. And, yeah. you know, the first 
decade was was challenging to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. So you did do the comedy store for ten years, right? Yep. And it led you to get to meet some really cool people, right? All kinds of people, all kinds of people would go through the, the comedy store because again, it's it's like at the top of the food chain of yeah. comedy clubs. So oh yeah, pretty much almost any big name in comedy you can think of over the past you know twenty years at some point or another cross paths with or did a set before or, you know cohorts you know companions uh, mm-hmm. in that in that side yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. So um, that's a very like live thing as well, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, comedy, but you've also done some other really special work. I heard you did a documentary about someone's life. I did. This was, um, well, Maggie uh, Avila, who I know you, you had a little uh, chat with. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she directed a, a piece um, about um, uh, quadriplegic and uh, beautiful film, and she had asked me to play the young Michael before he had the accident that rendered him in a wheelchair. And I loved the story and his message and his spirit so much that I immediately said, well, of course, just I'd love to be involved to contribute to to that story. And I'm big on that. I'm big on contributing to to stories that really, you know, have something to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that was that was something that I did with her a couple of years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, since you've done theater, you've done comedy, mm-hmm. you've done these film projects. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any other particular project that you're really proud of that you've been in? Oh boy, that's a good question. Particularly proud of. Well, I've done a lot of, um, out of necessity, mm-hmm. I've done a lot of self-producing mm-hmm. of, of, of my own shows. So there's always something that's very challenging about creating a show from scratch. Yeah. Um, and, and I've been a stay-at-home dad for like mm-hmm. 10 years now. Mm-hmm. So during that time, I've been doing a lot of self-producing of shows as a, a vocalist, a, a vocal acrobat, if mm-hmm. you will. Um, so I, I, I do obviously take a lot of I don't want to say pride, but but I feel I feel that the accomplishment of actually creating my own show mm-hmm. is is something to feel good about mm-hmm. because it's it's a it's a long haul, just to, you know, something from scratch and you know, uh, in, in terms of films that I've been in, I mean I've been lucky to work with some some pretty uh, well known actors mm-hmm. um, over the years. Um, and you want to name drop? Uh, a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, I, I, you have you know, to be humble, but we want to, we it's want to know. Fine. It's totally yeah. fine. People are interested. Um, I, I had a, a scene with Sigourney Weaver in a, a picture called Heartbreakers. Mm-hmm. Um, this was several years ago, and it was a pretty poignant scene in the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's she, her daughter was played by Jennifer Love Hewitt, and and uh, and Gene Hackman was playing. They were playing a, like a, a mother daughter con team, mm-hmm. and they were trying to get money from a character played by Gene Hackman, and and. Uh, so I get kind of get whisked into the middle of that in this scene, which is really just with with Sigourney, and uh, that was a that was kind of a cool moment mm-hmm. because you know with that you know with the, those types of people yeah. you know on that type of a production that was pretty cool. Um, one other comes to mind was a, a scene I did in a Charlie Sheen Charlie Sheen film. <laughs> this was this was before his uh, his time on Two and a Half Men, mm-hmm. um, and uh, there's a film called Good Advice. And it's a very, very memorable scene. Um, I don't want to spill too much about it in case someone wanted to watch the film, but I play a performance artist, Mm -hmm. and the scene with Charlie is just really memorable, I'll say. Mm -hmm. Really memorable and and funny. Mm -hmm. So so those are two. Wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So you were talking to me about how you're producing your own work now, right? Yep. And what doesn't come to that overnight, right? What experiences did you have that you think have brought you to the point where you can say, yes, it's it's my time to control all these aspects of, of this work? Well, several decades of being in the business, around the business, experiencing so many different aspects of the business mm-hmm. gives you legs. Mm-hmm. And once you've been in all kinds of different chairs and wearing all kinds of different hats, mm-hmm. um, both in front of and behind the camera, mm-hmm. you really get a perspective that it's a group effort right everybody matters yeah. everybody matters it doesn't matter what you're doing it's all part of the team so having having a really strong sense of that mm-hmm. I think is paramount very paramount um, and the what the project that I'm working on right now I felt it was time to move forward and create a feature film mm-hmm. so this is something that I wrote the first draft of like almost 20 years ago okay so when I put it into my little bag of things to get to mm-hmm. okay as many of us will do you come up with an idea or something so so I've got this draft treatment and I felt that it was just time to bring it forward again. Mm-hmm. And the timing of it seems to be good because this is a very multicultural film. This is a film that's got a rainbow in it. And, and I love that. And I love the idea of where we're at with, with inclusion, with, you know, we're all in this together. Let's, let's mix it up. 
right? Let's mix it up. And I think that we're seeing that more and more, and it's becoming more of the norm. Mm -hmm. And and that's pretty cool because it, it opens up so many storylines in a different way. Yeah. So this project that we can look out for, hmm. do you know if it's going to release? You know, it's still very much. It's still in pre production. Yeah. I'm still, quite honestly, I'm still doing the script. Yeah. I'm still fine tuning because the script, I believe, with most most film projects. Mm -hmm. The stronger the script that you start with, yeah. the better the chances that it really becomes something good. Better yeah, the chances. Really great. Yeah. So, um, I did. You did mention that you um, are a special type of vocalist, right? Yeah, I said vocal acrobat. Correct. Vocal acrobat. Right. Um, can you show us your special talent? I can. So, the vocal acrobat is a little term that I coined to kind of describe what it is that mm -hmm. I do as a vocalist mm -hmm. because. Um, there's there's people who do impressions, and I do impressions, like of singers and so forth, but I do, I think maybe my most unusual talent mm -hmm. is I create musical instruments mm -hmm. vocally, but I try to do it so well that if you close your eyes, it could be the musical instrument, mm -hmm. right? So I'll give you a couple of samples if you like. Mm -hmm. We'd love it, thank uh, you'd you. Love it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, why don't I start with something, hmm, I guess I could start with um, a little muted trumpet. Okay. Muted trumpet. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. This will be some improvised muted trumpet. So if you close your eyes, you can almost you can almost feel the instrument. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about in terms of it's a very I was saying it's an intimate art form, mm -hmm. but as an example of something that I've developed over like since I was a kid, I've been developing that. It's not just like I woke up one day and knew how to do yeah, that. Yeah, I was that was this like a like just like a talent you were born with, or was it a skill that you learned? Both. Yeah. Uh, it was something that I came across as a kid that you can actually do these things, but there's there's certain voices and certain things that I've kind of learned how to do just because I, I, I had a knack for it. Mm -hmm. So it's like for a mandolin, for example, okay, how do you do a vocal mandolin? Well, you have to familiarize yourself with the instrument, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you can, once you can familiarize, really get the soul of the instrument, then you can get the idea of, oh, a vocal mandolin is a... You can really feel the strings of yeah. the instrument, right? So that's as an example for you. That is that it's it's taking that art form, which is I think it's kind of a rare art form because a lot of people look at me like sideways when I'm like, yeah, I'm a, a vocal acrobat. They're like, what is a vocal acrobat? Yeah. And I and I tried to coin that because how do you describe somebody who does vocal stuff? Yeah but also has got that, that sense of sort of an acrobat vocally. Mm -hmm. You think of an acrobat, a physical acrobat, mm -hmm. as somebody who can do all kinds of stuff with their body and, yeah. and physically. So it's the same principle, it's just moving it over into the voice. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, that's pretty cool, thank you. They would have clapped, but everyone's out got their hands That's, full. that's yeah. fine. Applause not yeah. necessary, but I know it's, it's really fine. cool. Your theater teachers must have loved you for that, huh? It was a love hate relationship. They mostly oh, did. Yeah. They mostly did. My, my school teacher is a different story, but yeah, theater teachers. They were. They could tell that I was onto something a little bit different, mm -hmm. uh, and they were mostly encouraging with it. And it was. But that's something that I just developed myself. I used to go to underground parking garages because the acoustics are really good. Yeah. And I would just go in there and I just. <laughs> and you have this beautiful echo happening in there. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, okay. And that's that was. It's finding a way. I mean, so much of so much of life and independent filmmaking, for that matter, is finding a way. You have yeah. a vision. You find a way to to move forward with it. So yeah, that's what that is. I think as an actor, it's it's not as common for people to have this skill, right? It's it's a kind of unusual thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, I did want to ask, um, you do have that project you're working on. Correct. Um, is there any other places that we can find your projects? Um, do you want to plug in your social media, anything that you're working on yep. currently? Where can we find you? you can, well, you can find me on, uh, let's see, social media haunts would be uh, Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. currently, mm -hmm. those two, uh, because I spell my name with a G, it's pretty simple to find me. Um, I have not even created a page yet for this new film project because, as I say, I want to wait till the script is ready. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I mean, I'm still pre fundraising for it and all that, but it's, this is just something that, as I say, I've kind of turned a bit of a page. Yeah. And while I love everything else that's, that's been going on, I think it's time for me to step up with this particular project. So you can find me on there, reach out there. I've got a performance page on, uh, I think, Facebook. So if you want to find performing and see sort of some of the live stuff that I do and have done, you can find it there. And Instagram, too, I've got a whole sort of series of 
of vocal tidbits if you enjoyed what you heard today. There's mm -hmm. certainly more for you to peruse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably try to link some of this stuff down below as well. Sure. And my last question yes. is, do you have any pieces of advice for anyone that's starting off in the industry who um, maybe wants to do something similar to what you've put out? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, advice for the, the newcomers to the industry, uh, specifically those who have some something of an unusual talent or a niche or I'd say develop it because if it's if it's you if, and when it comes from you and your life experience it's genuine no matter what anybody says it's real it's it's you know it's it's genuine so I don't think that that anyone should should stand in your way I, I'd say forge ahead with it as best as you can and find a place for it you know find a place for it in whatever aspect of the industry mm -hmm. you feel you know magnetized to or or where you're drawn i'm a big believer in faith and the whole well if you're meant to go in this direction you'll probably go in this direction yeah. so but uh, but be brave be bold and 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 have fun with it because it's a pretty challenging industry yeah, yeah. It definitely is mm -hmm. well thank you so much for that jeremy we My really pleasure. appreciate you coming in and giving us your time My um, we'll look out for your future projects and I want to thank everyone else for watching on Maya. Um, so this series has been really fun. We've got to talk to a lot of artists. So um, keep watching for more and stay tuned, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.